Hi there, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to show you the setting out and the construction process of this spacious five bedroom duplex. Showing you how we set out the internal and external spaces, the construction activities that go on one after another, the materials that were used, both the quantity and cost, as well as the cost of the labor. We will also tell you what it could cost you to replicate this kind of project in today's Nigeria. That is in August 2024, Nigeria. Stay tuned as we take you through the process. That is the setting out process. We've asked, um, actually squared out the house first. That's the white line you're seeing around here. So we are now setting out, putting the profile board. From where we we'll now mark out all the internal and external spaces of the building. As at now in this construction process, the pegging and setting out had been completed. This is a process that involves taking a clue for the reference wall and then uh, bringing the four corners of the building as well as um, the profile board upon which the internal and external spaces are marked out. Here, all the process has been taken care of and all the internal and external spaces marked out. This actually is the end of the setting out. Um, while we now use sand to mark out these spaces on the floor just before the construction begins. Now, the marking with sand is done with the aid of rope which we call lines that are tied um, at corresponding uh, nails on opposite sides of the profile. And this helps us to bring out the building. That's by the end of the day to be as if you've drawn the plan of the building on the floor before the construction, uh, the excavation begins. should be taken 
to ensure that the drawing is strictly followed in the pouring of the sand and marking of the spaces to ensure that a foundation is not excavated past where it would ordinarily end as far as the drawing is concerned. So here we follow the drawing strictly ensuring that each line stops where it was supposed to stop and each line extended to where it was supposed to get to. And by the end of the day to just be as if you've drawn the entire plan on the floor here we are brainstorming with one of the engineers working with me on a particular wall of interest to ensure that we get the best out of the setting out process okay the setting out process is completed now so here is the entrance from the entrance pouch here okay let me show you through the um building so we have the ante room here and this is the main lounge here yeah we did this thing like this because we have some two big columns here and the same thing this other side now once you enter you meet the answer room here and um, the main lounge here this is the room this tall room and uh, from there um we have the curb staircase that will be here right and behind the coal staircase is the kitchen space area and the kitchen veranda out there and of course we have a store for the kitchen here then we have another room here which also led to okay we have um the laundry and the gym here and we have another pouch leading to the outside there so the setting out process is completed now what starts is the excavation i'll keep updating you guys after completely marking out the spaces with the uh, sand on the floor then the S is now clear where it is to be excavated and from one point to another point and then the excavation of these spaces began That place where you did, yeah, Chief Wedon. Well that place you can still touch hand this other side. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well done. So here, the excavation was done to the depth of three feet. That is approximately nine hundred millimeters. Um, with the places that have housed the columns at least uh, one foot deeper than the normal excavation. This is to ensure that the column base, the column itself has um, enough strength to withstand all the load that is going to come there. And of course, that place is going to be filled with uh, concrete and the reinforcement.
so after the excavation of the foundation trenches as well as the column basis is completed the next thing is the casting of the foundation with concrete here we first ensure that um, the column bases are cast uh, to give the column the basket okay. and the starter bars a solid um, base to mount um, before the major construction begins so as you can see here that's actually the activity going on blinding the column base right and after which um, the baskets will be put on it and then the columns um, placed at the right positions using lines from opposite um, profiles to get. that here the blinding of the column bases have been completed but because um, we have so much concrete that were already mixed on the floor we had to uh, start with the casting of the foundation um, since it had already been pegged so we already know at the level we should get to and this is to ensure that none of our concrete kicks on the floor and after this, then uh, we will mount the columns and then cast the column base to the height of the foundation. So in setting out, um, there are two particular nails that are being uh, nailed on um, the profile. So the first is for the foundation and the next is for the walls. So in getting these um columns we have to use the walls they, they need nails for the walls tying corresponding ropes on the opposite sides of the profile and then um, placing the columns at the intersection of the ropes which is more or less the points that need the um, the columns the most the process of mounting the pillars so to mount the columns you have to tie the rope at the wall lines here on the profile board so you need at least two lines to be able to get one pillar so as this one crossed here and this other one from that place also crossed so you know that there's a, a column here and that's how it is mounted then you plumb it just like he's doing there to ensure it's at the right position and then tie and um, brace with off cut rods and this is how we're going to do all of them until we get all the columns in this building so you can imagine the kind of work that go in here <laughs> no piece more work at all but we're gonna do it to get it right the first time so after casting um, the foundation trenches the next is to um, set out the blocks the block work is now done taking a clue from the walls the lines of the walls that we already have tied on the, on the profile and then plumbing from the line down to get the blocks and once the first and second block is gotten then you now tie a rope on that straight line to get all the ones in between the two 
So that is the process that is being done here. Yeah. Um yeah. That to ensure that everything aligns <laughs> and everything follows the already mapped out um, profile. So this same process is repeated on all the lines, all the walls, both internal and external of the building to ensure that it follows what was set out on the profile board until we've gone round getting all the lines, all the walls, one after another. We have like um, two blocks above the ground floor and we're still going to beam it. So the beam is going to be like the sixth block here. That will give us our DPC. And by the time we go all the way to the front there, it will be like seven blocks to the DPC. So as at this time, all the walls have been raised to the DPC level. And the last block we uh, did with a beam, chaining the whole DPC together to ensure that... Um, the forces are together before the filling and compacting of the um, the building space. At this point, what was left for the building to achieve the first milestone was uh, completing the filling um, of, the of the foundation space with laterite, then um, watering the whole place and compacting the sand with compacting machine, after which then the, um, the, the oversight concrete of the DPC is cast. Now, by the time all these processes were completed and the casting of the DPC was done, which marked the end of the first milestone, which is foundation to DPC, it was observed that the following materials were used. One bag of two inches nails, one bag of three inches nails, five bundles of peg, 30 lines of 2x2 two two profile boards, 12 lines, 5 shovels, and 5 headpans, 200 bags of cement, 8 strips of 7 tons of sand, 2 strips of 30 tons of chippings, 4 to 5 lines of 16mm rods, 75 lengths of 12 mm roads, 30 lengths of 8 mm roads, and one roll of binding wire. 
Additionally, 3,000 blocks, as the 9 inches blocks, were used. Then the 20 sand, uh, the, the filling sand was 20 trips. Then, of course, we used local stone to um, cast the DPC. So, five trips of that, which is more like the uh, seven tons tipper, were used. Then, the nylon that we used as damp proof membrane were five rolls. The boards that were bought for uh, the board in the formwork for the DPC, as well as the starter bars, were 100 pieces. Now, to get these materials for a similar project in today's Nigeria, that's the considering the current market situation in Nigeria today, will cost eight million three hundred and forty thousand five hundred naira. That's for the material. Now, the cost of the labor, which includes the excavation, the concrete work, the iron bending work, the carpentry work, the filling of sand to the DPC, uh, to the block, to the, uh, to the building space with sand, then the casting of the DPC, as well as every other associated works including the supervision for this project or similar ones in today's nigeria we cost about 1.8 million naira so this is to say that this project from foundation to dpc in today's nigeria will cost about 10 million 140 thousand 500 naira thank you for being with us this far and see you in our next vlog.